हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम कंटेक्शुअल मैथड्स विच मीन्स मोर एप्रोप्रिएट मैथड्स दीज डेज टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस लाइक प्ले वे प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग कोऑपरेटिव एंड कोलेबरेटिव लर्निंग टूडेज लेसन ऑब्जेक्टिव आर दैट यू विल बी एबल टू लिस्ट द लर्नर फ्रेंडली मैथड्स ऑफ टीचिंग You will be able to discuss the following student-friendly methods like play-away method, problem solving, cooperative learning, and collaborative learning. After this discussion, you will be able to discuss the role of teachers in student-friendly methods, and you will be able to list the advantages and limitations of student-friendly methods. First of all, we should know that what is method. dictionary meaning of method is that it is a way to do something and when we talk about in teaching it means the pedagogy and instructions used by teacher to make the learning more effective how can a teacher make his or her teaching learning process more effective by using different pedagogy and instructions we can categorize methods into two categories first is instructional that is the teacher centric where the teacher is in the center point teacher is active and the students are passive under this category demonstration method comes lecture method comes discussion method comes and when we talk about the learner centric method that is also called the student friendly methods these days when we talk about the learner centered education learner centric method and student friendly method becomes very very important under this category comes the play way method problem solving project method collaborative learning and cooperative learning we should know what are the student friendly methods the student friendly methods are those methods where the child learns and develops his or her skills and abilities through self involvement in learning learner learning's first maxim is called law of readiness when the student is not ready it means when the learner is not ready to learn learning cannot take place so student friendly methods by using the student friendly methods we can make our learner active and he may be self involved in the learning process here the teacher's role is to create a situation where the student will solve the problem themselves here teacher is passive and the student is active teacher act as a motivator and guide and helps the student whenever he or she is in need at the time of need teacher is always helpful to student but the main role is played by the learner only first we will discuss about the play way method as the name suggests play way play way means by doing game by playing process the child learns something it is basically a method which emphasizes on child centered education as we know that children love to play and by using this method in education child learn the concepts in easy manner by doing games and activities when there is no force the children learn spontaneously children put their heart and soul in doing playful activities and grasp the concepts easily in a spontaneous manner there is no pressure of learning because here teacher is not teaching at all here the student is learning by themselves by doing game and by playing way what are the elements of game here are some important elements of the game first is that it should be interesting if the game or play is not interesting the students the learner cannot put their heart and soul in learning any concept second is spontaneous action when we play all the activities comes in a very spontaneous manner so second element is the spontaneous action third is self imposed discipline discipline cannot be inculcated from outside it should be inculcated and it should be self imposed discipline then only any any type of task can be done beautifully and work without fear where there is fear 
work cannot take place there is no compulsion so students play and the students learn in a spontaneous manner without any fear and informal environment classroom environment is a very closed and compact environment when the teacher centered method takes place but in playway method there is a informal environment by doing some mistakes by doing different activities the children learns spontaneously and intrinsic motivation intrinsic means innate capabilities the motivation should be within not from the outside when the motivation is from the within naturally the learning will take place permanently and this is very cooperative and challenging because when you play games or you do some activity obviously you cooperate with each other and that is the these are the basic elements of a game what are the different principles of playway method by using playway method then the teacher is observing the students the learners following principles should keep in mind first of all the principle of unfolding innate potentials innate potential means whatever is within the child through game by playing the game by doing the activity innate capabilities come out and that is the basic principle ki by playway method using the playway method in teaching learning process innate capabilities innate powers of the students come out second principle is principle of complete freedom there is no compulsion there is no pressure on the students to learn something he or she is working in the complete free freedom full environment and principle of activity children are doing different activities and by doing different activities they are learning something next is the principle of pleasure obviously when we do something within heart within soul we get the pleasure and that is the basic principle of playway method and principle of creativity when you do something from your heart naturally the creativity within whatever it is inside you it comes out and you give your best so the self responsibility creativity pleasure activity complete freedom and unfolding innate potentials these are the principles of playway method now we will discuss what are the advantages of playway method as we have discussed ki what are the elements of game these elements of game reflects in the advantages students get freedom and they work in a spontaneous manner without any pressure from the outside this method promotes self discipline naturally when you do something on your own self discipline takes place there is no outer discipline part there is no teacher and you you learn how to maintain discipline by yourself thirdly this helps to nurture the creative skills of the children it enhances the creativity part of the learner the children can develop life skills like problem solving leadership rational thinking self expression and communication skills they develop their rational thinking they develop their self expression part they work in the cooperative manner and that's why they learn the cooperative learning approach also they know how to work in a group man is a social animal when we work something in group they learn in group and this develop their group living power learning becomes natural joyful and energizing experience law of readiness is the main principles of the learning and when the learner is ready to learn naturally learning becomes natural it helps to build healthy student teacher and student to student relation shifts because student is working with the student and teacher is motivating that's why there is no fear between student and teacher and there is no no competitiveness between student and student that's why it can build a very healthy relationship between teacher and student but there are certain limitations of playway method too every method cannot be completely perfect this method is considered to be more suitable to the pre primary and primary level students some basic concepts can be taught by playway method but in the higher classes 
in the upper level classes, every method, every concept cannot be taught by the playway method. This, this is the limitation of this method. The content and concepts of all subjects cannot be introduced through this method. All the concepts and all the contents of all the subjects cannot be taught, cannot be learned by this method. Because at the time, time consuming, this is time consuming and time limitation is in the teaching learning process too. Sometimes a few children may give more importance to playing games than learning through playway method. Some, some uh, students can give more attention in playing rather than learning something. So these are certain limitations. That's why playway method cannot be used in every field or every content or concept. But there is a very important role of teachers in playway method. First of all, the teacher should prepare relevant teaching learning materials after designing the learning activities. If the teacher is not prepared well with the learning materials, learning activities cannot take place. Arrange the learning activities from simple concept to complex because we should move from simple to complex, from general to specific. So in the initial phase, simple learning activities should be introduced, then gradually the complex concept can be introduced. Teacher should be a guide, a supervisor and a leader for the students during the learning process and evaluate the students through playway activities and evaluation part should not be ignored. Otherwise, playway method will become a game and play only and it cannot be converted into learning aspect. Next is the problem solving method. As the name suggests, problem solving. The process of solving a problem is called the problem solving method. Problem solving method is all about searching for the most appropriate way to achieve a learning objective. According to Lee M. James, problem solving is an educational device whereby the teacher and the student attempt in a conscious, planned, purposeful effort to arrive at a solution. Keep in mind, there should be a planned and purposeful effort. If the efforts are not planned and purposeful, then problem solving method will be useless. What are the steps of problem solving? We should proceed problem solving method. We should use problem solving method in a sequential manner. First of all, identify the problem. On what problem you want to work? Identify and anticipate the problems which is existing on which you want to work. Second step is the collect information from diverse sources to arrive at a clearer understanding of the problem and its root causes. This is very important. You should collect, learners should collect all the information from different sources, from different diverse sources so that you can understand the problem in a better way and you can reach till the root causes of the problem. Next is the generate alternative solutions. When you have all the information from different sources, from different sources, now you generate alternative solution. What can be the solution of your problem? Which is the solution, different solutions are there. So what type of solution you want of your problems? Then evaluate its strength and weakness of alternatives including risk and benefit and short and long term consequences. See, you can get many alternative solutions of a one problem, but at that time you have to analyze what is the best alternative and how can, what are the strength and weakness of different alternatives, what are the risks and benefits of different alternatives and what can be the short term consequences of that alternative and what can be the long term consequences. So you are going to decide what are the strength and weakness of that particular alternative. Now next step is that you select most appropriate alternative to reach the goal. Whatever alternative you find best, use suits best to you, then you select 
that this is the most alternative solution, solution of my problem. And last step is the established criteria for evaluating effectiveness of solution or reach a conclusion or decision. Now you set the criteria of evaluating effectiveness of the solution, then the problem is solved. What are the advantages and limitations of problem solving method? First of all, as it requires logical thinking, reflective thinking, that's why it promotes reflective thinking as well as the logical thinking. Because you have to gather the data from the different sources, you have to select best appropriate alternative. So it increases your reflecting and no logical thinking power. It develops scientific attitude among learners. Because you work on a problem, you search different alternatives and you reach the conclusion. So it develops the scientific attitude among the learners. It helps the student to deal daily classroom problems. As a student, as a teacher, we have so many problems in daily classrooms. We deal with different type of classroom problems. So this method gives you a vision to solve the problem, classroom problems in your own way. But the limitation of this method is that it is not at all suitable for all the stages of learners. And all the stages of learners as well as from all the level of the learners. Some students are not capable enough to deal with the problems and they lost their patience and they then, then the problems cannot be solved. So this is not suitable for all stages of learners. Now, we move towards cooperative learning. Next student friendly method is cooperative learning. This is also a student centric method where the students work together. This learning model was developed to achieve at least three important instructional goals. First of all, academic achievement, acceptance of diversity, and social skill development. It gives opportunity to the learner to achieve the academic target on their own. And this cooperative learning enhances the social skill develop among the learners because man is a social animal and student comes from the society so naturally the social development should be an integral part of the learning and when the students work in group with different individual differences they learn they accept the diversity of the human beings. There are certain features of cooperative learning. First, the students work in group to master academic to master academic materials. They work in heterogeneous group, which consists of high average and low achievers. When you work in a group, there is a mix of average, low, and high achievers. Group include a mix of racial, cultural, and gender of students. There is also mixture of culturally diversified students, racially diversified students, and obviously gender also. There are different students of different gender. Next, reward systems are group oriented rather than individually oriented. When you work in a group, when you work in a cooperative manner, then reward is also group oriented. It cannot be individually oriented. It encourages democratic processes because you are, you are dealing with different kind of students which are racially different, which are culturally different, which are academically, which are uh, individual difference. We, as we consider in psychologists, there are different individual differences are there. So when you, deal, when you are dealing with different type of people, obviously it encourages democratic principles and it promotes individual accountability. Because when you work in a group, you work in a cooperative manner, individual accountability matters. And it promotes, it provides equal opportunity to all. Basic elements of cooperative learning is the positive interdependence. Each group member 
has been allotted a task, a role, a responsibility by the teacher. Therefore, they all are responsible for their learning and individually and that of their group. You are responsible, the learner is responsible for his or her own activities and simultaneously he is also responsible for the group too because he is working in group. It promotes face to face interaction. Members promote each other in learning process and assist others in completing the task. Because when they are working in a group, it is the responsibility of all the members to cooperate in learning process and assisting others also in completion the task. Because this is a joint effort which takes place and individual accountability. Each student is accountable for their own work and learning and demonstrate his mastery on content. Everybody has to make a presentation what he has done in the group and he has to explain the mastery which has achieved, which he has achieved during the project. It develops social skills. Social skills are necessary for successful cooperative learning to occur. It develops interpersonal and group skills like leadership. In group, somebody acts as a leader. So it develops the leadership quality among the students and it develops the decision making power because when the students work in a group, they themselves make them capable to take the decision and it enhances their decision making capabilities. Third is the trust building. When you work in a group, you have to trust each other. So it also inculcates the feeling of trust building and communication and conflict management skills. Individual differences are there. You cannot ignore that. You cannot remove that from the group. So you know how to work with the group and if there is a conflict between the within the group, it can be removed and you get that much capability to remove the conflict from your group. Next is the group processing. Group characteristics must be present that students are working toward a group goal or recognition. Every individual, every member of the group should possess this quality, possess this feeling that they are working for a group, not for the individual. And second is that group success depends on each individual's learning. If one is not working and few are working, then success rate may be low. So group success always depends on each individual's learning, each individual's contribution. Now the important part is that what is the teacher's role here? In the initially, I told you that here the teacher role is passive, but teacher is here. If students are active in a student centric uh, method, but teacher role is also there. He is motivator, he is a guide and he works behind the curtain. First phase is present goals and learning set. The teacher goes over objectives for the lesson and establishes the learning set for each group. In the second phase, present information. The teacher presents information to students either verbally or with a text material. He can provide the information verbally also and he can provide, he or she can provide the information in written form or text material form. Third phase is organize students into learning teams. Then the teacher explains to student how to form learning teams and helps to group make efficient transition. With the help of teacher, students form their group, they organize their team and accordingly they work. Next phase is assist teamwork and study. Teacher assists learning teams as to do their work. Teacher, whenever the students, whenever the learner, whenever the group needs help from the teacher, at that time teacher assists learning and help them to do their own work. Next phase is the test on the materials. Teacher lists knowledge of learning materials or groups present results of their work. Teacher lists out the knowledge of 
learning materials and the result of their individual growth. Last phase is the provide recognition. This is a very important phase because when somebody works, the students wants recognition also. The teacher finds way to recognize both individual and group efforts and achievement. Th this is the very important role of the teacher to recognize the student's work. Because when somebody gets the recognition, he or she or group feels confident, more confident in doing the work. What are the advantages? There are certain advantages of this method. Academic gains for all type of learners. Because when you work in a group, all types of learners are there as per their individual differences. So group success means individual success or individual success means it's the group success. So everybody enjoys the learning process and beneficial for all the learners. Average, high, medium, every learner get the beneficial from this method of learning. It improves interpersonal relation among learners because when you work in a group, when you work together, when you work in a cooperative manner, it develops your interpersonal relations also. Individual differences are aside and interpersonal relations increase. Difference among learners enhance the quality of adjustment. Life is adjustment. You know, you learn how to adjust within the different kind of people. And it increases the self-confidence and self-esteem of the students. When you work in a group, when you learn something in a group, when you learn the quality, learn the quality of adjustment, then obviously your self and confidence increases. And when your self-confidence increases, when the learner's self-confidence increases, automatically self-esteem is developed. Certain guidelines must be followed while doing the cooperative learning. First of all, that group size should not be more than three to five students. Because if the group size is too large, then learning cannot take place and uh, some uh, haphazard and some haphazard activities will take place. So group size should not be more than three to five students. Second, compose group heterogeneously by mixing students considering academic achievement sex and race. Group should not be homogeneous in nature. It should be heterogeneous in nature, then only you learn how to work together. Give each student in the group a specific role. This is the duty of a teacher that he or she should assign a specific role for each and every member of the group. So that individual responsibility Accountability is there because each and every person is responsible for the success or failure of the group. Now, we will discuss about collaborative learning. What is collaborative learning? It is a method in which learners engage in a common task where each individual finds out and is accountable to each other. This method follows, allows face-to-face -face interaction, conversation, and discussions using the computers like online forums, chat rooms, etc. The students, the learner can use the computers, online social media, whatever it is possible. But earlier we discussed the cooperative learning. There is a linear line between, a, a very a thin line between the cooperative and collaborative learning. Cooperative learning takes place when students work together in the same place on a structured project in a small group. But collaborative learning can take place anytime students work together. It is not necessarily that there should be a same place or a structured project. Suppose if you want, if the students want to do homework, it is a collaborative effort, then it can take place anytime. And second difference is that in the cooperative learning approach, the authority remains with the teacher. The teacher is continuously monitoring and guiding and suggesting modification to keep the group on the track of solving the problem. Because teacher is behind the every group. But in the collaborative learning approach, 
once the task is set, which is always open ended, and the teachers transfer all the authorities to the group. Now it is up to the group how they work together. Certain features of collaborative learning are that the students learn to work with all type people. This is also same with the cooperative learning. And here the acknowledgement of individual differences, interpersonal development, self involvement in learning. Why student centered method are important because it involves the learner themselves on own. That's why the learning becomes more permanent and more effective. I hope you have understood the basic features of the playway method, cooperative learning, collaborative learning and the problem solving. So these days, these are the some contextual methods by which and by using these methods in the teaching learning process, learning can become effective and more permanent. Thank you.